Hello my dear friends, you are in the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 7th of March of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we are going to talk about Zaporozhye direction. Today the Russian sources published very interesting and to tell the truth very cool video. On this video we can see the Dragon Teeth, the Russians defense belt, defense belt that the Russians managed to create just for 6 months. The Russians really was too. They wasn't scared, but probably there were a lot big risk to lose the entire Zaporozhye direction. So the Russians invested significant time and in, uh, investments and fundings, but they created this defense belt. The defense belt that Ukrainians haven't managed to bypass. And now we see that the Russians continue their offensive operation based on this defense belt. And we see that Ukrainians also started the process of creation of the defense. But we see that the Ukrainians are not able to create something like this. And the things that they are creating is of course not like this. And according to information we have, according to some analysis from the Western countries and some analytics, uh, the Russians manage, the Ukrainians, since the beginning of the special military operation for more than two years, haven't managed to create even a half of defense belts that the Russians managed to create just for six months and these analytic experts calculated the let's say the how many the rush how many uh, let's say fortifications the Ukrainians built how many the Russians and they projected that if the Ukrainians continue with the same speed obviously just in six years they will be able to create something similar that the Russians managed to create when talking about the Western press everybody understand this critical situation and for example the uh, Wall Street Journal posted and their let's say fresh update that Ukraine is entering new phase of the war the trenches phase Ukraine answers new phase of war with Russia dig dig and dig so this is exactly what the Ukrainians need to do and the Ukrainians started this digging in deeper process and for example today the Ukrainians tried to uh, launch the propaganda machine trying to show the work that this ongoing process the Ukrainians are creating fortifications and they today for example this video was published on this video we can see how the Ukrainians are building some small fortification uh, let's say area or some small fortification a strong called somewhere on the Parozhye direction and there are a few important notes that you need to understand about this defense belt according to Ukrainian sources this defense belt the Ukrainians are building behind Orekhov not in front of Orekhov not between the Parozhye and Verbova not between Rabotina and Verbova not between the uh, fields they captured during the Ukraine's greatest counter-offensive operation when they lost more than 90,000 soldiers they're building this defense belt behind Orekhov between Orekhov and Zaporozhye which confirms that Ukrainians understand that very likely they will be forced to fall back from Orekhov and they will be forced to give this town to the Russians and that they need to concentrate their activity to build defense belt and not to allow the Russians to capture Zaporozhye because if the Russians are able to capture Zaporozhye we can start counting days when the entire Ukraine is going to collapse. Furthermore, this is not the only area where the Ukrainians build the fortifications. Also, we have some updates from Sumy area. On this video, we can see additional non these pictures we can see additional fortifications and you need to note one important thing when talking about Zaporozhye the Ukrainians were building fortifications with stone with stone with normal uh, construction materials that can survive and to um, uh, hold the pressure of fabs but when talking about these fortifications we understand that just a regular FPV drone FPV drone is able to reduce these fortifications to ruins so we can say that Ukrainians have no fortifications and the most um, biggest strong Holes and the uh, most fortified areas they have already left, like Avdiyevka, like um, Bakhmut, and now the clashes in the vicinity of Chasavyar, and so on. So, the situation for the Ukrainians is critical. Now, let's move further, closer, deeper to Zaporozhye direction. As you understand, probably you're following the Telegram channels, and today we receive significant number of updates from the territory. So, let's start one by one. According to the Russians, in less than a day, there have already been almost 30 bombings by the Russian airspace forces by FAPs in the Zaporozhye direction so the bombs are very heavy more than 30 and this is like the first belt that the Russians are going to start a full-scale offensive operation with the purpose to cut the Rabotina salient. The Russian armored forces today on the 7th of March interrupted the uh, operational pause in Rabotina Verbova area from morning until now the Russians have been rolling in wave after wave pushing through the defenses of the Ukrainian armed forces. Later we got additional updates from the same territory northwest of Verbova 
Ribova, Russians advanced one kilometer and brought back previously lost points under control. They're moving towards Robotina, the Robotina Verbova connecting road. And we got another update that uh, the, uh, from the Ukrainian side, the Ukrainians confirmed that update. According to uh, the speaker of the Tavria, uh, Lihavoy, according to him, the Russian Federation has become more active in Arikhov direction and is trying to cut off the Robotinsky ledge or Robotina artillery pocket. All those things that we just discussed were just telegram messages from Ukraine authorities, from Russian authorities, from very reliable sources, but without any proofs or changes on the ground. But when talking about some geolocations, there were one geolocation, and I would like to discuss with you this geolocation. On this video, we can see the Russian soldiers, the Russian stormtroopers, were attacking the Ukrainian positions in a very close distance. Three Russian soldiers were assaulting Ukrainian positions somewhere in the fields of Verbova. We see that two soldiers of Russian armed forces attacked the territory with rifles, and this, the third one was attacking the territory with grenade launcher. He launched two grenades, and then there was a very heavy explosion after that the point was suppressed and the Russians managed to establish control or just to clear the territory but later the Russians fell back from the territory and the most important is this video on this video for example we can see how the Russians were running from that positions and this is the uh, the continue at the end of the previous video first the Russians stormed the area and after that they were using a very small and very mobile quad just a regular quad and not, nothing more three soldiers were on board of the quads and very fast very flexible and very mobile they were running away under the Ukrainian fire and this is a very important video because this is the new tactics the Russians are using they are using just a light vehicle light uh, let's say light cavalry light infantry uh, with the purpose to clear the area to capture additional trenches no armored vehicles no tanks just light quad with the soldiers on board they are doing very fast attacks after the fpv drones clear the area then the infantry comes clear the area completely and then then run away if you take a look at this video you're gonna see that ukrainians made a lot of attempts to attack the russian soldiers with artillery rounds and if we uh, when, when saying that, uh, for example, uh, the Western countries, the cost of one artillery shell is around from four till nine thousand euros or dollars. That means that Ukrainians spent up to fifty thousand dollars to destroy a quad, and they haven't managed to do this. And the cost and the price of this quad probably is not so expensive. So we see that it's a very interesting tactics. And furthermore, I would like to remind you, uh, when talking about the previous day of the sixth of uh, of March, uh, yesterday most of the mappers updated their maps uh, showing the progress of the Russian forces and adjusted the maps like Syria, Kribar, Deep State map every, all of them updated their map based on this video and on this video we can see the same a small Russian quad with three or four stormtroopers on board attacked very fast Ukraine positions the uh, Ukrainians tried to slow down them with artillery we see that the artillery didn't uh, give the Ukrainians any results a uh, small quad uh, let's say landed three soldiers these three soldiers capture the territory and then they uh, fall back from the area so this is very let's uh, say interesting and very useful tactics at least when talking about the Porozhye direction when talking about the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation, they reported that Ukrainians during the previous 24 hours lost just 30 soldiers on this direction, which also confirms that uh, very likely uh, all reports about Russian wave by wave, it's not something that fit with the reality. I think that uh, there is offensive but less active, less massive, and probably just with the use of these small and mobile groups of soldiers on quads among the fields. Now we are moving to the south uh, Donetsk direction. We got, as we discussed in the previous video, lots of very interesting updates from Novomikhailovka itself. The Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to establish control over the southwestern part of the village. They made uh, three waves of attacks. The first wave of attack took place yesterday. We discussed that operation. Today, the Russians published two additional videos. To be more precise, the Ukrainians published the videos. On the videos, we can see the Russian armored groups uh, with tanks, with clearing equipment, trying to clear the area and after successful clearing and landing uh, of the soldiers the russians tried to fall back one of personal carrier got on mine and was destroyed and after the russians managed to establish control over the over these three lines and to dig in deeper the russians launched the second wave of attack and as a result of the second wave of attack the russians entered the novo mikhailovka from the southwest and very likely as a result of offensive the russians established complete control over this part of the village and basically this is the beginning of the end of novo mikhailovka 
I can't tell you for sure how long the Ukrainians are able to hold Novi Mikhailovka. Maybe days, maybe hours. Maybe the Ukrainians have already left the village and the Russians are trying to clear the territory. And tomorrow in the morning we go to receive the video with the Russian flags in the western part. Who knows? But anyway, the situation for Ukrainians in Novi Mikhailovka is already doomed and resolved. They have no ch chances to hold the territory and very likely they will be forced to fall back very soon. Maybe they have already launched this process. Now we are moving to the uh, Marinka direction, Marinka Georgievka direction. We haven't received anything from uh, the area uh, in uh, Georgievka. The, the last the latest updates we have is that the Russians control this part for now without any geolocated proofs. And more additional updates are coming from Krasnogorovka. The Russians continue the storming process. During the previous 24 hours, the Russians bombed Krasnogorovka heavily with significant number of FAPs. On this video, for example, we can see the arrival of another FAP along the railways as a result of strike and other Ukrainian positions were suppressed and destroyed. Furthermore, the Russians managed to discover additional Ukrainian FPV drone positions and the Ukrainians, the Russians managed to discover the command center of in this area and as a result of anti-tank missiles, those positions were destroyed. Furthermore, the Russians managed to discover the and the ruins of high-rise building additional Ukrainian anti-tank position and as a result of a strike against this anti-tank position, another point of pressure from the Ukrainian side was destroyed. So for now, as you can see, the Russians are focused in conducting the clearing operation, trying to make secure way, secure road for the Russians during possible upcoming offensive operation deep inside of the of the stronghold. And all these geolocations confirms that very likely something big is going to happen very soon, very soon. Furthermore, some Russian military experts are saying and making their own projections about the further Russian plans. And according to very reliable, very smart military experts, uh, we have reported that the main target and the main goal of the Russians is to establish control over not over Achiretina or the western part of Avdiivka. The main city, and the main area for the Russians is this territory between the water reservoirs Kushne, Kalinova, um, and Karlovka, Nitailova. So this area, and from this. Uh, let's say bridgehead from this foothold the Russians are planning to attack Kurahova from the north the Russians are plan planning to move to Slidova and from Slidova to Pakrovsk and from the same area the Russians are planning to encircle the Ukrainians in progress in Achiretina so this is the main Russian target but to do this the Russians still have a lot of job to do with Pervomaiska, Nitailova, Nivoiska and of course Krasnogorovka but the Russians are in the process and we'll see what is going to be next. When talking about Avdiivka we see that most of Jilly Locations confirms that Russians uh, took a made a decision to uh, launch uh, to start operational pause. It doesn't mean that the Russians lost are exhausted or something like this. It means that the Russians during the previous phase of the FDF offensive operation managed to achieve the main goals they uh, they had before the beginning of the operation. Currently, from this direction, from this defense belt, we received just videos of few types, mainly of a multi launch rocket systems attacks against the Ukraine positions in the village by the name of uh, Toninka and the village, uh, the same story in the village by the name of Berdachi. Just multi launch rocket bombings during the night period of time, not even during the daylight, and that's it. No attempts to attack, no attempts to force the Ukrainians to fall back, and so on. Once again, the Russians managed to achieve the main goal to capture Avdiivka and to force the Ukrainians to move their artillery forces as far as possible from this line and what but what um, this first of all this situation gave the Russians complete reduce of any bombings artillery bombings of Donetsk and casualties among civilians and this is very important of course and the second thing the Russians managed to achieve is to restore Yasinovate. Yasinovate is a railway station between Donetsk, Gorlovka and let's say main Russia and this area used to be one of the most important logistic hubs before the special military operation, before the 2014. As you can see, Yasinovate connected Avdiivka, Donetsk, Gorlovka uh, and uh, Dibaltsova in different logistical railways hubs and now the Russians uh, start using this area with the trains and the first trains start moving through the territory. It will reduce the Russian logistic expenses, logistic losses, it will improve the Russian flexibility and make them more mobile. They will be able to send forces from Mariupol to Kupinsk within a day without any problems and without long and very difficult logistic uh, roads and so on. 
So the Russians obviously managed to improve their logistics by involving Kesinovata and its railways into the common network of Russian logistics. Very important achievement that allowed the Ukrainians, uh, that allowed the Russians to um, complete regrouping and to renew offensive further to Pokrovsk. Now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction. Important updates are coming from Zelenopolye. The Ukrainians continue attacking the Russians with FPV drones, massive attacks where during the previous 24 hours lots of armored vehicles abandoned vehicles were damaged and destroyed by the Ukrainians. Uh, the Ukrainians were attacking also the trenches so the concentration of forces and this is a very big pain for the Russians because if we increase the numbers of updates let's say since the beginning of February we're gonna see the entire picture we see the concentration of Ukraine FPV drone fire. So uh, they can just use FPV drones they don't have artillery forces for these purposes and so that's why the Russians during the previous 24 hours main were mainly concentrated on this area. For example on this video we can see how the Russians managed to discover another Ukrainian FPV drone position and it basically suppressed the area with uh, aviation cluster RAM bomb RBK 500. Uh, the area was under very heavy attack from the Russian side and the Russians managed to deal significant damage to the territory. Let's take a look once again. Uh, in this video we can see a small base of operators of FPV drones and in a second the Russians start bombing the territory heavily with RBK-500. One explosion, the second explosion, the third explosion, uh, the drones are flying above the territory, the bombs, so th that was obviously a nightmare for the Ukrainians. During the previous 24 hours we haven't received anything from uh, Ivanovska, the clashes and active phase of assault continues but without any progress on the ground. Maybe the Russians also made a small operational pause before the final rush, before the final push and before the final collapse of the Ukrainians. The Chasov Yar, uh, when talking about this town, no changes uh, and the Russians continue bombing this area heavily with FAPs uh, but without any changes on the ground. The main purpose of activity in the vicinity of uh, Chasov Yar is to force the Ukrainians to pin them down and not to allow them to counter-attack the Russians in Ivanovska, not to allow them to regroup and to attack, so the main purpose just to free Freeze them and uh, not to ri allow them to raise their hats. And um, uh, to understand the situation in Chasavyar, of course, it's better to increase the numbers of updates, let's say, uh, since the beginning of January, of March, just for seven days of the month. And we're going to see the full picture and the full configuration of Russian focus. Significant number of explosions, fab attacks, telephone travel strikes, FPV drone strikes. Every single square meter was under Russian very he heavy fire. So that's why no chances for the Ukrainians to conduct any successful counterattack to slow down the Russians. Now we are moving further to Bilogorovka direction. We got additional reports from the village. The Russians continue offensive operation inside of the village and according to some sources the clashes currently are taking place inside of the village and of course it's not a surprise for us because if you remember just yesterday we were talking about the clashes between Russians and Ukrainians on the uh, let's say base of this landfill and if you remember we discussed the video and I told you that uh, the Ukrainians, some Ukrainians in this area after very heavy pressure from the Russian side decided to abandon their positions and just start running away from the area we remember the soldier who was running the most the, he was the, the, the fastest one now as you can see the Kenyans uh, uh, under the fire he he dropped his gun his rifle and start running away just for his life and we yes they made a conclusion that very likely after the Ukrainians left their positions these positions would be captured by the Russians and today we start receiving reports about the clashes inside of the village so probably all these things are connected between each other when talking about uh, Tierney, the south and Kupin's direction we haven't received anything from the area the same story we haven't received anything from the north in Kupin's direction Direction. The only information we have is that the Ukrainians restored once again the bridge over Askol River and now they start, let's say, supporting their forces once again. But as soon as the bridge was restored and discovered by the Russians, obviously within the next few days we need to expect another attack from the Russian side with the purpose to collapse the logistic once again. When talking about the line of combat contact, just some activity in the vicinity of Kislovka Katlarovka, uh, both sides counter attacks without any changes on the ground. But the most important updates are coming from the western Kupin's direction. According to information we have, somewhere at uh, uh, 6 p.m. of the local time, we received the first updates that Ukrainians about uh, announced the total evacuation from the area. 55 settlements were, uh, are for, will are to evacuate. Later, we got update and 
information from uh, the head of Ukrainian military administration. He confirmed that 55 uh, settlements should be evacuated immediately and obviously they will be populated by the Ukrainian forces. So the Ukrainians understand that the Russian attack is going to start, let's say, maybe not uh, today or tomorrow, but within the next few days. And we understand and we have no doubts about the situation because, for example, on this video we can see how the Russians managed to discover another Ukrainian position somewhere along the borderlands and that the Russians attacked the territory also with a cluster aviation bomb RBK-500. And I'll remind you that the last time the Russians were using those these RBK-500 so massive was before the fall of Avdiivka against the positions of 53rd Mechanized Brigade. And the same story in the to the north of uh, Kharkiv in the area of Gravska. The Russians discovered another Ukrainian artillery position on some uh, support machine and as a result of strike that machine was also destroyed. The Ukrainians tried to keep the reconnaissance and sabotage groups along the line of combat contact along the border and uh, let's say to be uh, to have some like alarm and some security if something happens uh, the first forces will announce uh, to the mainland and the Ukrainians will have time to uh, prepare for the upcoming offensive uh, so obviously the Russians will clear the area in the very near future and then they're going to start full-scale ground offensive and Kharkiv obviously to be uh, furthermore, we got additional reports and updates uh, f about the mobilization as we discussed in the previous videos. Today we got additional video. This is Chernivtsi, the western part of Ukraine, and this is how mobilization process is taking place in Ukraine. And this is where the uh, tax, uh, the money of the western taxpayers goes uh, to do these pictures and to do the things. Uh, furthermore, we got, as we discussed in the previous video, the um, process of mobilization from Odessa when uh, the soldiers arrived and they turn off the building from electricity uh, just a uh, man uh, let's say regular man left the area trying to turn on the electricity and he was captured by the Ukrainians obviously this is not good and furthermore we have another important updates from the western countries the most important is that uh, sweden uh, has has become the 32nd member member of nato and this is very important because now the nato countries has the legal let's say access to these islands visible islands and according to military experts this is the most important achievement one of the most important achievements from the way for the nato countries and from these islands according to experts the nato countries are going to control the Baltic states and not to allow the Russians to capture the Baltic states very fast. So that was the main purpose and this is something about the territory. Of course, we need more details to understand. Uh, furthermore, we got the military exercises on the north of um, Norway and Sweden and Finland, a military exercise that involves significant number of forces. So we see that NATO countries are really planning to start something bigger than just a special military operation in Ukraine, probably the war with Russia. And furthermore, we start receiving more updates about the creation of very aggressive um, coalition of the Western countries and leaders against Russia. The, currently, there are two countries in this coalition. This is Emmanuel Macron, the president of France and France itself, and the Peter. Pavel, the, pr the Prime Minister of Czech Republic, and he's also part, of, so currently there are two aggressive leaders who wants to fight uh, and to be not to fight, but who are uh, required not to be afraid of Russia and to be more aggressive in questions that uh, related to the European security and the European needs. And the most important that, if you remember, Macron promised to send forces to, uh, to the Ukraine, but he changed his mind and according to information we have, France will open a permanent defense military in Moldova in the coming months. Macron announced the meeting with the president of uh, Moldova, Sandu, in Paris. And I'll remind you that, that just a few days ago, the leader of uh, Gaugazia visited Russia and the leader of Transnistria, and they were talking with Russia about support and help against Moldovian aggression. But when talking about the situation, we need to understand one thing, that France uh, haven't deployed their forces in Ukraine because obviously they would be a legal target for the Russians, but they deployed their forces, non-combat forces in Moldova, and this is exactly what Macron was talking about a few months ago. But we need to understand that the most important purpose of these non-combat forces in Moldova, and obviously they're really combat forces, not to support Moldova, but in case if Russia starts doing something and starts some offensive operations towards Odessa, the Western countries, NATO countries, NATO garrison need to have a special forces of fast reaction 
reaction and if it necessary to move as fast as possible to Odessa and to establish control and to secure Odessa from the Russian invasion. This is exactly what is the main purpose of these, let's say, uh, forces in Moldova because we need to understand if uh, Russia wants to help Transnistria and Gaugazia, they don't have chances to do this. They can't send planes, they can't send infantry, they can't send products or artillery because Transnistria and Gaugazia is surrounded by the proxy NATO countries. And the only possible way how to help these small regions of Moldova is to establish control over Odessa. So when talking about the conflict in Moldova, first of all, we are talking about the status of Odessa. Only if Odessa on the Russian flank, there is a possibility for Russia to establish and to let's say secure and to resolve the question of Moldova itself and the final update probably the most important update if you remember uh, during the previous days the Olaf Scholz the Prime Minister uh, of the Chancellor of Germany reported that the United Kingdom there are United soldiers of United Kingdom and officers on in Ukraine and today we got the first geolocated confirmation of the presence of the real officers probably police officers of United Kingdom on the territory of Ukraine on this video we can see the United Kingdom officer probably police officer I don't know what is he doing here he has his police uh, officer stick he has his hat uh, probably he was sent here somewhere from uh, middle England or something like this and currently he is serving in the Zaporozhye police forces and probably he wants to help uh, people to uh, let's say to feel themselves more comfortable uh, while the Ukrainian police officers were sent to Avdeevka. So this is the situation in the area. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.